Hey everyone, today is Monday, November 21st, and I just wanted to get on here, shoot a quick video on what we are experiencing in the market right now as it relates to the entire sector, sales, fundamentals, interest rates, what's going on. So first to start off, we all know that transaction volumes are really, really drying up, and that's really led by how fast and rapid interest rates have, have gone up. And then how, uh, you know, the really the banks are reacting to all this. So uh, sales are down. We don't have data yet on how down there they are, but um, it's, it's more than it, it feels around 50 percent drop within transaction volumes from its peak. I mean, that's that's a that's a ballpark estimate based on feel. Uh, there's still buyers in the marketplace. Overall, it's not that bad um, in the in the market. Uh, you've got some price discovery that's taking place right now where we're trying to determine where prices are shaking out. Uh, but the fundamentals so far have held up. Uh, it's really just your cash flows and your interest rates and your cap rates. Everything is not really settled in yet and found its balance. Uh, but uh, transaction volumes are down for sure. We're working through that in the marketplace. That rolls over to what's going on with the banks. So you got some banks that have leaned in and are well capitalized and that are financing transactions. You've got some banks that are totally out of the market. Either they really had a great, robust 2022 and they're just saying, you know what, let's just pump the brakes here. Let's see where, uh, you know, what we want to do entering the next year in 2023. Some banks are just it's it's. For lack of a better word, there might be a little bit of a, a tightening in liquidity. They're they're just out of the market completely. So I think that's uh, percolating throughout the market right now. Uh, it really goes back to the banks that are leaning in and lending. I don't want to say names necessarily of, of banks that have, have retraded us <laughs> or retraded borrowers in the marketplace, but it's happening. Things are changing uh, internally with certain banks, but um, there are a few lenders out there that have, have been very consistent. And, uh, you know, we do want to make shout out to those folks. Um, I think your Chase banks, uh, your, your first uh, republics, those are going to be very strong banks right now that are um, going to offer and, and, and lean in on executing on their term sheets. Um, you know, it's just tough. It, it's tough right now with some of the loan assumptions. You think you've got a, a loan assumption, but some of the banks might be leaning in and saying, well, according to the loan docs, you know, we can take your rate to market. We're seeing some of that going on right now. Uh, we're seeing where they're cutting proceeds substantially. I mean, everybody's got to re-underwrite uh, the, the loans, you know, based on new taxes being reassessed on a loan assumption but they're also looking at how much term is left on the existing loan for the assumption and do they need to underwrite at a higher rate and that cuts proceeds. But some of these proceeds are getting cut substantially and it's making it more and more difficult. So not all loan assumptions are created equal. Uh, that is a fact as we're learning firsthand. So um, if you're thinking about doing a loan assumption on a, on a purchase, um, you know, feel free to reach out. We can talk to you more one-on-one -on, -one on what we're going through. Uh, but that's that's pretty much been some of the headwinds, right? It's just working with the banks, uh, getting loans assumed, getting new uh, purchase financing through. Uh, we're starting to see cash in refinances now where folks maybe had a building, for example, three, four, five years ago. Maybe they had an interest only payment. They didn't pay down their loan, um, which is all fine and good. But when it comes up and they're hitting a window right now where they might want to refi, and the banks are having to underwrite at six, six and a half percent stress rates, uh, and they're, the proceeds are being cut, and you might have to come in with cash just to refinance. So that's some of the things we're seeing. Um, as it relates to rents, so far rents have held up. The rental market's very, very strong. Typically in the holiday season, as you get towards Thanksgiving that we've got this week, uh, just your showings, your applicants typically are a little bit slower than uh, other peak times of the year. Um, but it's also a concern that we're tracking uh, closely our um, prospective residents and tenants just kind of battening down the hatches. Are they are they out uh, flocking to move in to new places and pay high rents? Um, are they more or less staying where they're at and staying put? I don't know. That remains to be seen, but it could be a sign of 
um, you know, what's to come. Maybe there's more job layoffs. Maybe we might have a little bit more softening in the market as far relates to a recession. And then maybe that affects the renter and that might affect market rents. Um, those are things that are on everybody's mind. So we got to be careful of that. So we're re-underwriting um, deals based on higher interest rates. And now we don't know if we're going to be underwriting with softer market rents or the same market rents. It depends market to market. Um, but we'll see. I'm not being pessimistic. I'm just being realistic. You know, these are things that we're all looking at and focusing on within the marketplace. Uh, let's see here. We talked about rents. We talked about debt. We talked about the overall market. Um, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, as you're, if you're not transacting right now and you're not financing right now and you're just kind of le leaning back and saying, all right, I'm operating my properties, optimizing for cash flow. I think you're starting to see maybe some folks, if they've got a turn coming up, are they going in and do a substantial renovation or are they taking maybe a classic unit and doing a classic plus type upgrade where they're doing some upgrades and fit and finishes and leasing that unit maybe not to the tip top of the market, but they're getting a jump and they're getting a better return on cost. And they're also leasing the unit probably quicker because there's less downtime in renovating that classic plus versus totally renovating a deep reno and having your, your unit offline for 30, 45 days. So I think there's that there's the doing preventative maintenance, property upkeep, tenant retention. Those are things that are going to be, you know, always a focus, but probably more so given kind of everybody's taking a, a lot of the market is just taking a wait and see approach as things kind of percolate and everything kind of gets priced into the market. Uh, that's pretty much it. It's still a good time, uh, you know, to, to pay attention and to focus and, to, you know, be aware as to what's going on long term. We're still very, very bullish optimistically about multifamily short term. We're probably going to have a little bit more headwinds coming, but you know, it's good to be informed. It's good to talk to folks, see what's going on in the market, hear what other people are up to. Uh, that's more or less the update as to what we're seeing, just hitting some top line, uh, you know, touch points and what we're feeling and sensing in the marketplace. We're going to be doing an investor poll. We're going to send out a questionnaire to investors, six or seven questions, and we're going to collect a lot of that data and we're going to go out and share some information on more uh, pinpoint data as to what the market's feedback is. So thanks so much for watching this video. Feel free to reach out anytime to anyone on our team. We're here and happy to help and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much.